pray that you will satisfy your word, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. We come to teach unto you, O we pray, we will not speak of himself, O God, but we will speak of you, O God, in Jesus' name. That no, you, no man will be heard, but only you, O God, will be heard in Jesus' name. And even we, the hearers of God, we pray that you open our hearts to God in Jesus' name, that we will hear, O God, and understand in Jesus' name. We will not be like the Pharisees who heard and were confused. And we had nothing to do with you, O God, but rather God will be doers of this word in Jesus' name. Thank you for all you have done, O God. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's have our seats. Amen. I welcome everybody to today's service. Amen. I thank the Lord God for today that we are here and we can all worship God. Amen. And for the past month, we've been looking at a very important topic. We've been looking at um, season of settlement. Amen. And I know that Christians like um, the message of blessing. We all like message of blessing. Some people tell you uh, that tomorrow somebody here will be will be fifty million dollar richer. You have job. Amen. But today we're going to say something a little bit different. Amen. Not because I like to be a prophet of doom or because I like to say something to scare you. This message is not meant to scare anyone at all. But rather, it's actually supposed to stir us up and to wake us up. Amen. And I pray that we will all be woken up in Jesus' name. That from every slumber that we have entered into, that the God of heaven himself will wake us up in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we are looking at a topic I call, Settle the Matter Now. Amen. Remember, this month is the month of total settlement. Amen. We've looked at settlement in the areas of our finances, in the area of our health, in the area. We've looked at the seven keys, the five keys to total settlement. We've looked at the five keys to how to attain them. We've looked at the principles to attain them. But beyond all those principles, beyond, beyond, beyond all those keys, there's something we actually need to do. The Bible said in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33, which I believe we all know by now, that seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. Amen. What, I, what we've been teaching for the past three weeks, if this, today's own is not, it's not yet settled, those three weeks will not continue. It's not a curse. God said, Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. Amen. Today, I'm employing every one of us to settle the matter now. Amen. Let's open our Bible to the book of um, Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 18. And that's our text for today, Isaiah 1, 18. Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 18. I'll read from here. Amen. Say, Come now, let us settle the matter. Say the Lord. Though your things are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. They are, though they are crimson, as Christians, they shall be like wool. I'll read it again. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Do your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. They, though they are as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Amen. Amen. Who was speaking there? The Lord Himself. Come now, let us see the Lord. Say the Lord. Amen. He's saying to us, that come now. Let us settle the matter now. Let us settle that matter now. And what is that matter the Lord God wants to be settled today? I can tell you, at least I can be sure of it, it's not the matter of money. It's not how much you have in your account. The Lord God is asking you to settle today. It's not the matter of uh, where am I going to live tomorrow? What am I going to know? Where am I going to uh, buy my home? You know, some of us are asking God, God, connect me back. Tell me the streets and the house number you want me to buy. That's not what God is asking you to settle down today. But what is actually to settle about is actually something that pertains to your sin and to your life. Amen. And I pray as we go on today, the God of heaven will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I think one of the greatest strategy and strategy or one of the greatest problems in life or after life is not what we know, accumulate. A rich man dies, where does he get buried? In the grave. If poor man dies, where does he get buried? In the grave. It is not, it's not because you are rich, they will make your own 10 feet below. You six feet. The poor man, it's not because he can dig deeper, they will dig him better. Amen. Everybody dies and they get all them buried in the grave. Both of them, either you put in the coffin, or you put in his hand, or you put in um, a cloth, or they even cremate you, which I don't subscribe to. Christians, not a cremated, amen. 
explanation is to not, it is a, it is a kind of order of worship which we are not going to go into today. Cremation should not be part of the Christian life. Amen. Amen. It's not going to be cremation. If you die by fire, it's different. But not then, I want you not to die. You say, me and put my body on the table. It's, it's like an abomination at, at the point. Because if you die, it's in, in the Old Testament, your body is taken to a separate place. If you touch a dead body, you are called unclean. It's a certain time. But today we see people die and say, that's my father. And which one? The one in that call. Amen. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. But the most important thing for us is actually our soul. Amen. God is not concerned by our wealth. God is not concerned by our anything. But what is concerned about is the, the state of your soul. Amen. And I pray that the God of heaven will help us in Jesus' name. Let's open our Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. Matthew 16, 26. I'll read from the NLC version for the New Translation uh, version. New Living uh, Bible writer. I said, what do you believe what do you benefit if you will but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? Jesus Christ was speaking. Is anything worth more than your soul? I remember when we, when we were young and I was still in the world, people pride themselves and say, I have two girlfriends. I have, I have one on every area code. Some people say, oh, I have money. My father is a dry. My father has a cleaner and things like that. But it comes to a point, when the most important thing in your life, or at the, in, at the point of your life, is your soul. Amen. And I pray that God of heaven will help us in Jesus' name. And I can I, I show you many Christians, we go to hell, not because they deliberately want to, but because they feel they examine themselves every day. Amen. Christian life is one of the hardest lives you can ever live. I know people will say, tell you that Christianity is the easiest thing. It's actually contrary to the world in every form. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2, said, be renewed by the transforming of your mind, that you might be able to know what is pleasing to the law. Amen. He said, you not be confirmed with the image of this world. The world has a system of doing things. You don't have to learn how to be bad. bad. To be bad is something that many of us can do naturally. But to do good seems hard. And that is what we want to be by. Amen. You need to deny your body, your flesh, to be able to please God. Amen. Bible said, he that uh, did not gratify the desires of the flesh, then you can be able to please the Lord, amen, or live by the Spirit, amen. So many Christians are going to go to hell, and I can tell you, plainly, I will say it anywhere, in the rooftop, many Christians will go to hell, not because they want to, not because they want to really say, I'm, I'm going to hell. They are not careful, because they have not watched their life, because they are not asking themselves every day, am I doing it well? The Bible said, walk out your salvation. Will you even say? It was not speaking to those who are not saved. Like, walk out your salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Life is very, it's very slippery road. The road is that road that goes, that, that gate that goes to hell is broad. Anything is allowed. You can drink and still go there. You can have five wives and still go there. But the way that goes to heaven is straight and narrow. And when we mean it straight, it's not a straight road. It's S T R I G H T. It's the kind of straight when you mean you are putting a straight jacket. It's tight. It's a place where not, not everything is allowed on that road. Amen. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. And this message I, I show you is for you and myself. I'm not speaking to anyone. It's for you and me. Amen. It's for each both of us. Because we need to examine. The Bible says in the book of Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, say, examine yourself if you are still in faith. You only feel the test if you are reprobate. Amen. You only feel the test if Christ is not in you anymore. Examine yourself and ask yourself, have I done well? Have I done what pleased the Lord today? Have I done what made him happy? Amen. Many people put that passage and say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. What does that mean? You think, when the Lord does happy, I can give you a very good example. Luckily, my auntie is here. And she knows, I love my dad more than my mom. I love my mom dearly. I love my mom, but my dad is number one. Amen. My dad is number one. Exactly. Amen. But I can tell you, when my dad tells me he's not happy with me, he breaks my heart more than any 10,000 strokes any man will give me. But when my dad says, I am happy with you, you won't believe it's the kind of energy that comes to me. Amen. And that's why, before I became a Christian, we, were not, we don't get along. But when I became a Christian, we began to, you know, when we begin to, Tell me I'm happy you're doing this. I'm happy that you're serving God. It gives me a kind of joy and strength that I can't receive from anywhere else. And that's what the Bible is saying. 
when you do what pleases God, when God looks at you and says, this guy was the only one, this guy endorsed, said, this is my son, who I'm well pleased, yet he came. Obama can endorse anything, but only God, if God endorses you, he gives you the kind of satisfaction that no body, no million dollar can give you. We need to live a life where we know at all times the Father is saying, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. We need to live a life where God tells the devil that have you seen my servant abide on me? He will not bow down to anything. Not even when he becomes a president. I know I will not become a president. Not even when his brother becomes a president, he will not, uh, he will not embezzle. Amen. I think God will help us in Jesus' name. Let's open our Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew 6, verse 33. I want to read the NLT version. I quoted it earlier, but I want to read the NLT version. The seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and it will give you everything you need. For the past three weeks, uh, this is the fourth week, we've been talking about total settlement in Christ. But I can tell you, all that can only come to you when you do the will of the Father. Amen. When the Father is pleased with you, then He gives you the kind of joy. Amen. Remember the text where we read uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18? Said, though your sins might be as red as crimson, though you might be as red as um, a scarlet, I will make you as white as snow and as white as wool. Amen. So now let's look at scarlet and crimson. Amen. The many of us see our life, many of us see our life as pure, but the Lord sees us differently. And when God, he will God always confirm something. He will tell you, you read the book of Jeremiah chapter one. He said to Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, what do you see? The man said, I saw an almond tree. The Lord said, you have seen well. It is possible for you not to see well. That's why God asked, what did you see? And the man said, this is what I see. And said, you have seen well. So it is possible for God to see something and for you to be seeing something else. Not because God, that's not what God is saying. But because your eyes have been distorted. Your vision has been blurred. Amen. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So many of us actually see ourselves as Christians. Many of us see ourselves as heaven bound. But the Bible says on that day there will be many gnashing of teeth. Let me tell you, the guy that calls himself gay on the street will not gnash on that day. He knows where he's going. Does he not? He knows he's not going to heaven. But he, those who are going to gnash teeth are those who thought they were going to heaven. They came to church on Sunday. They paid the tax. They got a very good tax refund. Amen. But on that day, they, they missed it. They will be saying, oh, how did I miss it? No, it's not how you missed it. When, what were you thinking when you were missing? Amen. I think we are doing this thing. So how to compare the Christian life to scarlet and to crimson? I will tell you, whenever I read the Bible, that's why the teacher, the grace of the teacher is different. Teachers tend to see things differently. When I read this passage, uh, Jeremiah 1, 18, it said, though, it might be as, uh, your, though your sins might be like scarlet, I'll make them as white as uh, snow. They might, they might be as red as crimson, I'll make them as wool. And I ask myself, well, why did God compare to scarlet and crimson? Why didn't he just say, though your sins are many, I will forgive you? Why did he say scarlet? Why did he say crimson? Why did he use those two things to describe a man's life? And it's because... I will tell you, Christianity is like a spectrum. Some people are the right side, some people are the right. That's why I like the right, right wing Christianity. So I will tell you, if you tell me that um, about me, don't eat pork, don't eat this, don't do that. If I still do all that and, and I still go to heaven, it does not change what I do. But if I eat it or not, if I eat it and I go to hell, it's bad, right? So I try, I try to put myself to the extreme right side where I try to be very cautious. The Bible said, avoid all appearances of evil. That's why I, I, if you are a lady and you ask me for car rides, I mostly bring my wife. You think that we're going to ask, let me, let me bring my wife. Amen. Because you see, it's easy for you to say, prayer means a prayer warrior. And they see me coming out from an hotel at 10 p.m. with Sachola, what would you think? So, for you have never seen Sachola before, you don't know who she is. And you saw me at Sachola, and we play a lot. She's my, she's my so that's why. Both of us are playing, no, we're just coming out from Radisson Hotel. What will people think? Ew! Oh! And because of that, and, and I know you know, because but nobody will know that we, we, that we went to pray. Amen. 10 p.m. Please, brothers, don't do it. 10 p.m. If you are with another woman, come and call your wife. Hey, yeah, come on. 
we have to live here together. Amen. And, 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 and likewise, please don't think I'm on the extreme. I'm not saying because you walk in here at night with a woman at 10 p.m. you are seen. No. But avoid all appearances of evil. Amen. So let's look at, like I said, instead of this is like a spectrum, you see some people on this side and you see some people on this side. Amen. So people are too worldly. They take the grace of God too much. Romans chapter 6 verse 1 said, shall we continue to sin and say the grace may abound? No. And you're speaking to Christians. Some Christians are saying that, oh, one stage I'm safe forever. Don't worry. I can do anything. I can kill somebody else's wife and be fine. No. You, shouldn't do, you can't do that. Amen. But there's also some people who are saying, God, I will not preach. Amen. I think I will not preach. Amen. Amen. So I said, I wrote here, I said, Scarlet is a, is a bright red color. Scarlet is a bright red color. While crimson is a deep red color inclining to purple. Scarlet is a bright red color, very bright red. While crimson is a deep red that is already becoming, it looks almost like purple. So now why bright red and crimson? Amen. You will see that some people, that some Christians, what we should be is white. What that what God expects of every one of us, why? That's what he expects. So that that being mentioned in Isaiah yeah, chapter 1 verse 18, white, red, Christian, you know, things like that. But this one, God wants it to be white, you see, some people are red, some people are now moving on to that area of crimson, where it's almost becoming properly kind of thing, amen. I think God will help us in this thing. But there are also Christians who live, there are Christians who live this life, are uh, like, no, it's, it's, it's like a fluid. The day, it seems it's not very obvious, the light will lead to, there's some Christians who don't really mind, they can keep a little bit in exam or they can put stuff on the um, resume, they need to be, they are, they are not very sad, you know, they know, it's, 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 it's red. They, they know, they know that some of these things are not really, really good, they know, that some Christians who, are, who tell you that, well, after they go past the red light, they'll tell you, and they still know, they know that I do not break the law of the land, I do not do this, but they know, but there's some people who have cleared their conscience, who are actually doing things that should not be heard in Christianity. Amen. Let's open our Bible to the book of Colossians chapter 3. We'll read from verse 5 and we'll read verse 8. Colossians 3 verse 5 speaks of those people who are in that red zone. Then, um, can you read please? I almost saw the baby on the video. 3 5. Colossians 3 5. Put to death, therefore. Put to death, therefore. Whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Whatever belongs unto your uh, fellow uh, world members, yes. Sexual immorality, sexual immorality, impurity, impurity, lust, lust, evil desires, evil desires, and greed, and greed, which is idolatry. Which is idolatry. These things should not be found in our midst. Paul said, "The sin that the sin are found among you." Christians do not be seen to be doing things like this. Today we hear of all kinds of sexual perversion. Because of our children, I will not want to be very explicit. Christians talking about the moral sex. Amen. God knows why you put your mouth at the, at the top of your face and you put other things somewhere else. Amen. Please avoid going to any other. Let your food eat you with your food. Your mouth is made of food. Amen. God help us to do the same. Today, people engage on all kinds of things, all kinds of impurity laws, all kinds of evil desire and greed. Amen. Such are the people. And they are Christians who put God on the separate and get the kind of things in them. Amen. These are the ones that are already in the Christian zone. They already published, they are not even sure, they are already black. Amen. They are already in the black zone. Amen. These are the ones God is asking you to put to death today. Is that evil desire in you? Let me tell you, when I first became a Christian, I think my auntie can speak. She knows me very well. She raised me more than my mom, I'm sure. She spent more time with me so she can speak about me. In my house, I'm one of the most naughty kids in my house. I don't know why. Today, now, when I think back, I know it's a devil. Because as soon as you say, do not touch, <laughs> I must touch it. As soon as you say, don't touch it, something's telling me to touch it. Not something's telling me. I'm just, I will, my hand will just touch it. After I touch it, it will be great. After I break, I will not lie. After I lie, I will not give you a bigger lie why I lie. Amen. When I became a Christian, I deliberately started to tell myself, these are the things I need to show in my life. Amen. The Bible said, the devil is the father of all lies. The time is a Christian. Can even stay one life. And because if you lie, that means God is no longer your father, the devil is your father. Today, I became, when I became a Christian in Nigeria, that was in Nigeria, I was talking to my brother's friend, and one of them said, Okay, oh, Christian, are you wearing jeans? 
the, the cause of that person, the Bible says, it is, it is the meat that you eat that will take your very present for advice right? and stop eating it. Please, please don't take it to the wrong way. I'm not saying that. But you know, because to him, he felt like a Christian should not do that. Not, I'm not saying that it is, no. Because of that, I withdrew from that step, right? Because of his own faith, so I can save him. Amen. The issue is this, many Christians are not, you need to learn to kill that evil desire in you. Paul said, I put my body to subjection, but after I preach the gospel, I myself might not be disqualified. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 4, not all of you can be teachers, but teachers will be more strictly judged. There's a reason why I, can't, I don't watch all TV shows, because as soon as I watch it, it is impressed in my head. And that will be the only thing that I'm remembering. And that's why I daily pray. And that's why I don't tell anyone, not everybody, if you're very close to me, I'll tell you, no, you can't watch it. If they're still very new, uh-huh. I'm still giving you grace. <laughs> Amen. Let's read verse 8, please. Now, let's read the red song. The red song. The colored song. But now, but now, you must rid yourself of all such things. You must get rid of yourself. As now, this. There's one that says, kill you know, these things in your youth. The other one says, now take it out. Begin to take them out. Yes, go on. Anger. Anger. Rage. Remember why the Bible says anger? Because the Bible says, be angry but nothing. You are allowed to get angry. It's, it's okay for you to get angry at your father. Why did you uh, put what on the floor? But you, you know, the Bible is not also telling you, you don't skin sin. I said, because your child, imagine somebody, um, a man, uh, beat his child to the point of coma because the child, of course, a child now took um, his dad's school driver and wrote on his dad's car, I love you, dad. But the dad beat the child, went back in back. He killed himself. He went and saw what the child had done to I love you, Dad. Because he didn't want the child to be on the car. He picked the child to the point of where the child had to be taken to the city. That came back and saw what the child was on the I love you, Dad. I'm not saying that he was not right on the child. So was very simple. But what I'm trying to say is this don't get angry at the point of where you can be taken. You can get angry at the child. It's wrong for you to do that. Amen. But don't get me on that point. Go on. Rage. Rage. Malice. Malice. Slander. Slander. And filthy language. Filthy language. Amen. Amen. Which is very common to us today. Many of us know how to use very, very, you know, perverse words to describe things. Amen. I pray God will help us in this thing. We need to actually avoid these things. These are the things that fix us from that, from that white zone to the red zone. Then from our white zone, you can to the crimson zone. And why you know it, you enter the black zone. I pray none of that, none of that will be our opportunity in Jesus' name. Christians, we are pleased, we are entering the end of time. Two days ago, uh, 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 what is it called? Uh, uh, Same sex marriage was legal out two days ago. On my blog, at least I'm not gay, I saw the symbol on my, I, I was looking for the text now, on how to change that. I was thinking, why would I put the flag on my blog? Because I was trying to change it, it's not, it's not my blog, and I don't know how to change it. And that's what the flag, you that Google has it, and everybody is everybody's using that flag like that. From something that keeps you back, keeps off. Now we all sit down and say, yes. And I'm looking at what they do, I told you, I think it's I know that today, like a life, since it's like marriage, people who do pedophiles and people who marry animals, we also begin to say, give them to you. And yesterday, it's already, they are already advocating for, that the people are already advocating for their own. That if you say that people need to get married because it is something that they can't be helped. Me too, I can't help it. I just like little children. Then, tell me where we are going. Very soon, they, they like that one too. They start to see people. I just like my dog. They now have to realize this too. Amen. Why? Because we are going somewhere. The world is never going to get better. Right? That's what we always say. If you think this world is going to get better, it's just joking. He has to get to a point where we are all going to cry for a desire. That's when we're all trying to be the answer. We are getting to that point where everything will happen. Morally, education, the education today is nonsense. Spirituality today is nonsense. Today, the Bible says uh, until the gospel is to the end of the world. Today, the gospel of prosperity is in the old world, not the gospel of Jesus Christ. People know more about the seven keys to prosperity than who is Jesus. They know how about how to in the world, in the whole world, everyone celebrates Christmas. Tell them why they celebrate Christmas. They don't even know why. 
the Jesus in the Christmas, they don't even know him at all. But the, the, the money, the gift in the Christmas, they know him. The gospel of prosperity is part of Jesus Christ himself and God them. Amen. And that's why he's not here again. Because we are not taking the two for two. The end of the year, today we are obsessed with all kinds of manner of things. I pray we help us with Jesus Christ. So today we are going to look at seven ways of how God sees us. Amen. And we are going to compare it to the book of Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. Amen. At least if I wrote the book, it's my own, right? We claim that uh, if I ask you right now that who wrote the book of Revelation, who, who, who would you say? John, to be lost. But it was rather than who wrote it. He said, he said, these are the words of him who sits on the throne. It was the church that was depicting it to John. And John was doing what? Writing it down. So it was not the words of John. So some people assumed that those words were the words of John. They were not at all. It's true that the old, the old scriptures were, were inspired by God. But Revelation is the only Bible, it's the only passage to read Revelation to the woman. So he said, Blessed is the one who reads and hears the word of the prophet. Only Revelation. But nobody, the Bible, the Bible says, Blessed is the one who reads the book of Exodus. Did he say, Blessed is the one who reads the book of Romans? There's only one book. Blessed is the one who reads the word of the prophet. Who reads and hears them? Why? Just catch yourself, go to them. And those are the words that we look at today. We want to look at how this word is supposed to see us. Why did he tell us that come now? Why is he asking us to come now? Why is he not telling us that everybody I think you're doing what? Well? Why is he asking why is he asking us to come at this point? Amen. I think we all also do the same. So our first um uh, uh, our first way of our world looking at the things in the book of Revelation, chapter two, we read that four to five. Revelation two, four to five. I'll read from here. It says, Yet I hold it against you. That was just that teaching. Amen. The way he saw the top of Ephesus. I call it scarlet episode. Remember what I said about Christian and what I said about scarlet. Scarlet are those who are still on the periphery. They're, they're, they're not really very deep in the skin. They're just on the interior of the anger, rage, knowledge. No, I won't be this morning. This is the other thing. You know, I'm going to say a little bit of F U and all those kinds of things. Those are the ones. The scarlet episode. Episode one was very, very bad. So this is what one. Amen. You see what one? The episode on was not a very bad one. Amen. Let's read Revelation chapter 2. 2. Amen. 4 to 5. Yet I hold against you. You are forsaking the love you first you, you had at first. Your first love, you are forsaking it. Consider how you are falling. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your last stand from its place. Remember your first love. I can tell you, if you really want to know how your Christianity is, remember when you first gave your life to Christ. For those who, are, who were really born again, they know. By the way, my auntie will tell you, when I first gave, gave my life to Christ, they were calling me a mad person because. <laughs> move, 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 move. I will not take the medicine. Lord Jesus, you will heal me, oh Lord. My mother was, you this boy, don't kill me. Take medicine. Even if it's God that created the tree, they took the medicine from the tree. I, I'm not taking it. Amen. Remember where you first lost the love. How were you strong in the, in the early days when you raised your life to The Bible said, day after day, they met in their houses. Today, we are complaining because we have service six times a week. Six times a week. In the early church, we were meeting seven days a week. Today, people are complaining. Holy communion service now is once every month. Our own church is once three months. In the early church, it was what? Daily. When they met together, they broke prayer. So they people they ask of what they did every time. Today, we have become scarlet. We have become scarlet every time. We have lost our first love. Many of us have lost that feel that used to burn in our heart. That thing that makes us to pray and read the Bible. Like I said, this word is for both you and myself. Because I remember, at least nobody has complained that I've shouted too much now. When I first gave my life to Christ, they shout, people complain. I was almost, I was almost beating. My uncle almost beat me. Like, he beat his own son. And he did not touch me because, because he knew my dad was a pastor. So he knew how to beat me, but he beat his own son. Ah. Amen. But today, my neighbor has found all the police. Today, none of us have been arrested in the train station because of this crime. Many Christians have fallen, have, have, 
Chinese bread. We know many of us have become cold. And the Bible said, in those days, immorality will increase and love of many will wax cold. Because when you see so much wickedness, you must begin to ask yourself, did I kill Jesus Christ? Am I the mother of Mary? Because there is so much imperfection. Today, people do church online. So if you even go to church yourself, you say, I think I even go once every Sunday. So people don't even go to church, and yet they are, they are seeing they are believing God because they do their own church online. Today, everything is online. Because God will help us continue this way. And I pray that God will help us because I still tell people, it's true that many of us say, oh, my, the Bible is on my phone. The Bible is on my tablet. Those things itself are the distraction. Today, people text and do all kinds of things in church. In the name of the Bible is on my phone. Amen. You need to have your Bible. Amen. Carry your Bible. Amen. You need to hold your Bible. Let us have that word in our heart. Amen. Ask yourself today, are you, am, am I part of that people that God is telling to that I find you need my first love? Like I, I can tell you, many people might fall into more than one category today. You might fall into just into one. Or many people might fall into more than one. So as your prayer life diminishes, as the way you study God's word, as it diminishes, do you think you know more of God's word you, you know less? And please, like what I'm trying to say is this, God did not say that how many verses can you call. Just like never quoted Moses according to Exodus chapter, no, he didn't quote anything like that. He said, it is written. I will say something like that, and many Christians will fail, fail to say. To forgive is divine. To end is human. Many people will say, yes, it's the Bible. It's never in the Bible. To forgive is divine. To hear is human was said by a Pope in, I think, 14th century. It was never in the Bible. And I can tell you, to sin is not human. The first man, the first time man sinned, what did he do? He went to hide. If you if, if it was in human, will he hide? No. If a child bites his mom while he's breastfeeding and he smacked the child, he won't cry. But smack the child when he didn't do anything wrong. He will see crying all that day. Amen. He know. So when people tell you, oh, it is, I can't forgive him, it's to forgive his divine, to so hear his human alive. You don't want to give, you go to hell. Amen. I pray we will not be able to help you this name. So, that's the first church, the Scarlet Epistle. Have you lost your first love? Second one is this, the Crimson Sinner. Amen. The Crimson Sinner. I, I will use this word to describe each church so you know where it falls right away. The, crim, the Crimson Sinner. Amen. We can see that in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 9. It says, I know, I know that. I know about the land of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Some people come to themselves Christians in the church, and Jesus is telling them, I know some of you call yourself Jews, and you're not, but you're actually a temple, a dwelling place for the devil himself. It's not just, it's not just for them, you're a follower of the devil, you're a synagogue of Satan. Revelation to the people of God. That's my idea. I know you are preaching and you are poverty, yet you are rich. I know the plan of those who think that they are Jews and are not for a synagogue of Satan. Some Christians, and I pray there's none of those people in our midst today who are actually the synagogue. We saw so movies and I see hear people uh, who were talking about something yesterday where uh, I can't even remember. And I said, why would you have to kill someone? Even if somebody, you, you don't have to look for, oh, it was the movie where they were trying to kill the boss, the bad man. And I sent someone to go and kill the man. And I said, I will even pay you to even kill the man. I said, if you buy the money. If you're looking for a job and they buy you, what do you do? Look for another job. But it's everybody, it's stacking everybody because of job. Do you think you yourself will have a job? But just to show you how. And Christians are very, we know how to do things. Now that we have done all the moral things, and we've done all the things we want, we don't just say, I'm going to give a testimony to the Lord. When I was praying, it was to me. And I got the job, and the things they did. Nobody knew about the kind of things that have been, the kind of evils that have done. My auntie was telling me about pastors who are using um, people to build the foundation of the church. They tell me, what kind of Jesus are you calling that church? Man, I don't want to believe it because my brother told me that he went to Nigeria and he was in a prayer and um, the, the police came to collect offering. Police officers were gone. Why would police officers be doing in the church? Paul said, I don't think anybody know why I'm among you. Why, why must you go out and look for someone to come and judge you? If a police officer has to come and collect offering in church, they let us not collect offering. Honestly. 
If I can't cross that, I can leave the offering at the back and nobody will take it. My dad said, everybody keep their phone in church. When you're praising God, you better keep your phone in your pocket. So by the time you say hallelujah, what? Hallelujah! Amen. Today we are in that time where people are the inner God of Satan. He actually the devil living in our midst. I pray that none of us will be that in Jesus' name. But still, like I said, none of us will be that in Jesus' name. But still, we need to ask yourself, have I, have I made myself a sinner dog of Satan? Have I made myself a tool for the devil? Have I made myself a weapon for the devil? Say, are you anytime? Any new sister in the church? Brother Kawe, what do you call that pastor? Pastor K. Woman, you. Amen. What can you say now? A church will be a, 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 a safe place for the women, for the children to stay. Not now, nah, but you're afraid. You can't go and put your child in your uncle's house because you're not sure what your child is going to do. Before people used to be afraid. If I put my girl in my uncle's house, you do something. Now nah, you're even afraid. We'll put your boy in your uncle's house. Those people are doing both boys and girls. Amen. God help us in Jesus' name. The third one is the Crimson Pegamon. You can see that in the book of Revelation chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. Revelation 2, 14 to 15. Crimson Pegamon. It's not seeing you as a scarlet episode. Seeing you as a crimson uh, seminar, or is it seeing you as a crimson Pegamon? I'll read. Revelation 2, 14 to 15. There are some of you who hold the teachings of Balaam. I'm sure we all remember Balaam. He taught them to sacrifice on the idol, he taught them to commit all kinds of immorality. Who, to, who taught Balak to entice the, Jew, the Israelites to sin so that they get food sacrifice on idol and committed sexual immorality? Likewise, you have also likewise you also owe to the teachings of Nicolaitans. The Nicolaitans were described as people who were actually Christian. It's actually called the scholars, the scholars of the Bible say it was actually his name was Nicola. So Nicolaitans. People who believe that um, as long as you are born again, nothing else will happen to you. Just you can see our wife. You take my house today, I'll take your own tomorrow. Did anybody look at my wife? Not even touch you. Did you look at my wife? Fine, we will blind you. Amen. I don't play with that. I can play with my brother. But <laughs> I always tell him, if somebody says, bring your brother, I'll just take you. Bring your brother, don't see what that is. Amen. So please, I encourage everyone of us. Wow, it's God's thing. Then in that 14, they are teaching people to eat food sacrifice for idols. They are committing they are committing sexual immorality. Some of us will say, they are, I, I'm not eating any food committing sexual idols. Food is something that goes with you, right? How about music? How about the um, TV? Things that are perverse, things that are glorifying the devil. You listen to a song where in the song that glorifying the devil, and then you're telling me it's not, you're not eating food sacrifice for idols. These things are supposed to glorify the devil. And yet, that's what we need to do. The Bible says, Lift up your head, go in the gate, and be down the door at the last door. He spoke about the gate, and he spoke about the door. I took psychology, and there are two ways how things get into your soul. Your eye gate and your ear gate. The thought, if you still feel something, you can still get into your soul. But the eye gate and the ear gate are two powerful ways. The things you see, you stay in your mind. The things you hear, Remain there. That's why the Bible said, Think coming by year and year. And I thought that I feel like I said unto the man, said, Look not to us. He was asking those two things to be open. Look not to us. Let's give us what I have not. But that which I have, I give to you. The eye gate were open, the ear gate were open, and faith came to that man and began to walk. Today, many of us are eating food and fighting for idols. We do all kinds of demands and we feel like it is good. But God is saying, The Christian Tagamon. Who all the teachings of Nicolaitans? The Bible says, if any of you, let every man have his own wife. Please, I know it does not happen now, me. It's true, we are too small. That's why it's not. But please, let everybody have their own wife. One, only one. The Bible not say two. He says, everybody will have one. He said, in the beginning, God made Adam and Eve. Today, we are seeing Adam and Steve. Amen. And we are seeing Miriam and Eva. I don't know what to even call her. Amen. God help us with Jesus' name. Today, schools are, 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 are actually advocating to teach um, um, same sex marriage from school. In America, it's actually, actually been legalized. The fraternity uh, will be taught in school. And you cannot actually still go up out. You cannot, you cannot opt out from those classes. So you better let the children, God, if you do this, the children that can say no. 
So if you tell your child, the day they say, um, Daddy and Daddy, tell them you want to go and pee, and tell them you're not going back. Call me from the principal's office, I'll come and pick you. Tell your children. The evening, the Bible says in the book of the said, when you walk with the child, you see about God. When you sit down, you see you about God. When you lie down, speak. Today, none of us teach our children anything. The things your children know are from the school. And that's why a child, most, most children, most children respect the teachers and their parents. Because they, they, everything they have learned in life, they do, even from the teachers. So I try to tell them, trust you, they'll say, they won't have the teachers. They just say, no, they'll not take your own. You need to be the one that will take your child every first thing. I'm not, me, nobody will tell my child the first thing of anything. Anything my child wants to know will come from me. Good or bad, I'll tell them, if this is good, this one, how to do it, this one, this one. Don't do it though. And I can tell you, those things that I left my father actually talk to me too. Amen. Yeah, I remember he told us of people who picked up prostitutes and they became ghosts at night. In fact, I was not, when I was younger, I was not a Christian then. So when my friends wanted to do it, I would tell my friends, I didn't hear what the pastor preached, or what my story my daddy told me about people who said they, they became ghosts. That's what I remember about the women became ghosts and like, became like, oh. Amen. I, I like to hear you can like say, Amen. Amen. So, Christian, Christian Simner, is your life devoted to God for the service of the devil? Amen. Amen. I think we now thought in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, come, carry, come, carry. Amen. Crimson Pagamon. Amen. Amen. And the next one is the Crimson Thyatira. Amen. Let's open our Bible to the rule of Revelation chapter 2, 20 to 21. Revelation chapter 20 to 21. That's that the fourth church we're looking at today, or the fourth kind of way God's looking at you. You tolerate the woman Jezebel. And this church and the previous one, Pagamon, and Caesarea and Pagamon are quite similar. But the difference is, Pythera has something worse than even Pagamon. Let's see. Two of them have similar issues. The first one is, is it? It's a little woman Jesus, who calls herself a prophetess. But by her teaching, she misleads my servant into security marriage. You remember the other one were following Bala. This one's are following Jesus. And even the food sacrifice for Idol, same thing. I have given her time to repent, but she's unwilling. The other one, those does not say that they were unwilling to repent. But this one, they are out of they are all repentant. They don't want to repent. These ones are stuck to their way. It's like the ones are already going to the black zone. The area are the ones that are going already to the black zone. God said, I gave you time to repent, but you are failing to repent. And I can tell you, each day that passes by, God is giving you opportunity to repent. From the lies, He gives you opportunity to repent. From your days, He gives you opportunity to repent. For many people are funny that say, I don't care about that. I don't care what they say. I will still hold on to my own way. I pray God we know what to do with the See, the Bible never said one thing is better than the other. All things are the same. But the thing that, will, that is worse is, you see, it's not because you committed, it's not the kind of thing that you committed that will make you go to hell. If you're not willing to accept the grace. I know my brother, there's nothing you do that I've not done two times. Worse than you. You are the best liar. Everybody knows him. I try to tell the case. Don't do that. It's like lying. But mind you. Don't do that. I'll just tell you. What did you say? I will not move. But yes, the, the difference is this. It's not by what you did, but it's that you will to take that grace from God. I say, God, I receive mercy. No matter what you have done, no matter how far you think you have gone to the wall, He's willing to take you back. And I pray you will take us back in Jesus' name. And the last, the um, next one is the Scarlet Sardis. Amen. The Scarlet Sardis. I'm mean, seeing in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 1. He said, I know your deeds. Remember this one is not Scarlet, it's not Crimson. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. And many Christians are in this category. They have a reputation of being Christian. Many people go to church, they don't really swear, people think that they are alive, people think that, oh, they pay their charge, they do all kinds of things. But I would say, I, you have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Like I tell you today, because our, our teachings go online, and I'll say it plainly here, many churches, are dead. Many churches are actually dead church. Today, you ask yourself, yeah, I tell myself, because I remember I went to Lagos, I grew up in Kano, so of course, a bookie boy. I, I went to Lagos, and on Friday, I think that Friday, I saw the, um, you know, the congregation where people go to the camp. I actually give my life under the ministry of Pastor Boy. 
I gave my life to Christ one time to this place. But imagine how many people go to that camp. How many people live in Lagos? And yet, go to Lagos the second day. People will swear at you. They will go to the camp. And everybody brings that system. Oh, do you think they are there? Many Christians are uh, many people who come to church actually there. My brother said they went for a three days fasting and prayer. After the three days fasting and prayer, everybody was lining up to so, um, get food. And people are troubling you. You just don't fast three days. And you're not troubling, troubling people off the you. Then tell me what they're hungry. That's the average that fasted for the days and for the night. The person they told him is this turn that stone into bread. If many of us have the ability to turn food to bread, they'll never buy bread anymore. The Lord has said, bread, I don't even want to go. I get a Filipino bread. This guy never did it. He said, do you have any food here? Two fish and two almond flies. If many of us have the power to come to the bread, we don't eat bread. We don't buy bread anymore. So, my wife told me, Timoni, when I had anointed, they are big, big stones. Let's give them massive bread. Amen. I can tell you many Christians actually, yeah, many pastors, many, and the issue is that the Bible says the gift of God is without repentance. Something said, that I will seek myself again. Many Christians, many pastors are seeking themselves, not knowing that the Spirit of God. The day the Spirit of God comes upon me, everybody will know. The day you, you yourself will not even know. The day the Spirit of God came upon me, everybody might have me. The day we live, I know you will not even know me, but the day we live, you, you yourself might not even know. Something did not even know. They left him. But when they came upon the Bible, came upon so mightily that he left his lion like a young goat. They left him. He said, I will shake myself again. He shook himself, nothing happened. Many pastors, many churches, many Christians are in that place where they are from. They are, not, they are, they are dead. But I feel we will never be like the Scarlet Palace in Jesus' name. But the one I want us to be is the white Philadelphia. Amen. The church of Philadelphia. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 8. This is the only church that does not have any flaw. No flaw was found in this church. Everything God said about this church was perfect. He said, I know you you have little strength. You have kept my word and I have not denied my name. You have little strength. And that's why I'm, I'm, not trying, I'm not trying to cajole you and tell you that's why we are small. You don't think that. We are small, yes. Yeah. But well, let me tell you, this, I guess what you have said, I know you have little strength. You are little in number. You are not much. But I want you to say, you have done my word. And I have not denied my name. Please, I encourage us. Our first and first prize is a very Let us go out as we have promised God and we want to do. We never believe. We never, we never, at least for those who are the core members, we never expect that we are going to start like chapel with the place I did. We, we, we actually thought we were going to be going out. We thought we would be doing ministration. Until our deal called us. He said, are you guys meeting? And we said, no. That's why we have a church. Otherwise, we wanted to be meeting, we wanted to be going out on Sundays, go to Center Street, uh, go, sorry, go to say, um, downtown and, and give stuff. That's Christianity. Christianity is not when we sit down here, we say, Amen. The Bible also said in the book of Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, because it's getting wrong, that do not forsake the garden of the saints. But it does not mean that you have to be here. We can all gather in downtown. I don't want to fix it long. Amen. I think God will help us in Jesus' name. The Philadelphia church, the church who, this is why they have this strength. Yes. You might not have no other quote the Bible, but let what God has given to you, let it take hold of you. Let that, let that little conviction, in front of you, let it propel everything about Let people see you and say, this man is mad for Christ. Paul was called a madman. People thought he was mad. My, my, I took, uh, when I was in the University of Toronto, I took this uh, religious study thinking that I would pass it. No, I said, I thought like, this is the only cause I would do. I was A. I didn't A to C. Just my lecturer said that Paul and Peter were man men. He said they were still doing you now. Then in my mind, why are you teaching CRS? Why are you teaching Christian studies then? I felt because I was writing the answers based on scripture. He was marking me based on theology. Faith. Faith. Amen. God will help us in Jesus' name. Let us become like the white Philadelphia. Amen. And last one is the scarlet black. Uh, Laodicea, you may consider in the Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. Say, I know your deeds. You are neither false or cold. They still have deeds. They do some stuff, but they are neither false or cold. Today they are born in, tomorrow they are cold. Tomorrow, today they come to church, tomorrow they are not coming to church. The Bible is saying, You are scarlet. 
don't have to be like this. And that's why he's saying to you, though you might be as red as scarlet or as red as uh, crimson, sorry, I don't know which one is red, which one. That's why I use red, red for both. But I'll make you as white as snow and as white as blue. Amen. You know. Please, and you've been looking at. Now, with major seven churches, the only one you are allowed to be is white to Ladekia. If you are, um, which one is the first one? Scarlet Epistos, you need to change. You have not your first law. If you are crimson sinner, you need to change. If you are becoming a, 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 you are becoming a snack go for Satan himself. If you are a crimson Pagamon, you need to change. If you have made yourself scarlet sardis, you need to change. If you have made yourself white Philadelphia, then you make consistent. And if you have made yourself scarlet Laodicea, please let us make our words. The Bible said, I want to either be one of them, either one or four. The other one, I'll speak you out. They are called the Empire. And that's what the Bible also says in the book of Revelation. He that's righteous, let him do what? Remain righteous still. He that's pure, let him do what? Remain pure still. He that's wicked, let him remain wicked still. The time is short. You don't have to be playing both sides. And that's why my father will always say he likes Fela because Fela did it very well. At least he knows that he enjoys his life. The Bible said, in, um, Paul said, uh, we, are most, we are most men, we are men most miserable if our reward is only in his life. If your Christianity is only in this life, then your Muslim must be driven. Amen. I pray for you, you know, not be able to do this thing. Because when people are going to party last night, you are here. You are, people are playing golf this morning. Sunday is a day of golf. Go to golf, golf, uh, golf arena. It's cool. But you are here today. My prayer is God of heaven will help us to do this thing. Last night, I just wanted to read Revelation to the people that came and they will pray. The those whom I love, I rebuke. And I discipline. So be earnest and repent. Revelation 3 19. Those whom I love and rebuke and I discipline. So I so be earnest and repent. Does this, does this message might not seem like three weeks ago where we talked about the lesson that God has proposed for us? I can tell you this is the best teaching ever. If you get this one, then you will need those three weeks of message. Because the Bible says, if you seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, and every other thing will be added unto you. You don't need to hear three weeks ago. If you hear this one, you're good. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. I just want to look at our hands as we pray. I want to look at our hands as we pray. I want to ask yourself, where am I in these seven churches? Where am I in these areas that God is looking at me? God is telling you today, come. Let us settle the matter now. What matter is he asking you? He says, Is that immorality in your life? Is that wickedness in your life? Is that fact sliding in your life? What is God asking you to set it to death? I just want you to just not even ask God for grace, just even ask God for mercy. I've just been relaxing my father coming to my life, O oh Lord. Show me your grace, O oh Lord, show me your mercy, O oh God. That, O oh Lord, at the end of God, I will not be a cast away from you, O Lord. That at the end of God, I will not be a cast away one of God who is lost to God. But rather, God, I will not take advantage of your grace. For your grace will have a place in your Lord in Jesus' name. Let us be in prayer and say, Father, that they have help us to God. Fill us with strength and show your grace in Jesus' name.